by the science kid. Today I'm going to read you another Amanda Gorman poem. I'm reading it because I like the other inauguration poem so much that I decided to read another poem by Amanda Gorman. This one's called Earthrise, about the earth and about climate change. So here it is. On Christmas Eve, 1968, astronaut Bill Anders snapped a photo of the Earth as Apollo 8 orbited the moon. Those three guys were surprised to see from their eyes our planet looks like an Earthrise, a blue orb hovering over the moon's gray horizon with deep oceans and silver skies. It was our world's first glance at itself, our first chance to see it a shared reality, a declared stance and a commonality, a glimpse into our own planet's mirror. And as threats drew nearer, our own urgency became clearer. As we realized that we hold nothing dear than this floating body we all call home. We've known that we're caught in the throes of climactic changes. Some say we'll just go away while others simply pray to survive another day. For it's the obscure, the oppressed, the poor, who when the disaster is declared done, still suffer more than anyone. Climate change is the single greatest challenge of our time. Of this you are certainly aware. It is saddening, but I cannot spare you from knowing an inconvenient fact, because it's getting the fact straight that gets us to act and not to wait. So I tell you this not to scare you, but to prepare you, to dare you, to dream a different reality. Where despite disparities, we all care to protect this world. This riddled blue marble, this little true marvel, to muster the verb and the nerve to see how we can serve our planet. You don't need to be a politician to make it your mission to conserve to preserve that one and only home that is ours. To use your unique power to give the next generations the planet they deserve. There is no rehearsal. The time is now, now, now. Because the reversal of harm and the protection of a future so universal should be anything but controversial. So. Earth, pale, blue dot, we will fail you not just as we choose to go to the moon. We know it's never too soon to choose hope. We choose to do more than cope. With climate change, we choose to end it. We refuse to lose. Together, we do this and more, not because it's very easy or nice, but because it is necessary because with every dawn we carry the weight of fate, of the fate of the celestial body orbiting a star. As heavy as that weight sounded, it does not keep, hold us down, but keeps us grounded, steady, ready. Because an environmental movement of this size is simply another form of an earth rise. To see it, close your eyes, visualize that all of us leaders in this room uh, or outside these walls or in the halls, all of us change makers are on a silver raft, on a silver space, on a spacecraft, floating like a silver raft. In space, we see the face of our planet anew. We relish the view. We witness its round green and brilliant blue, which inspires us to ask deeply, holy, what can we do? Open your eyes. Know that the future of this wise planet lies right in sight, right in all of us. Trust this earth uprising. All of us bring a light to exciting solutions never tried before. For it is our hope that implores us at our uncompromising core to keep rising up for an earth 
more than we're us fighting for. I really like that poem because it's about Earth and it's about all what we can do for Earth and how Earth is the only thing we have. Without Earth, we'd be nothing. So we have to keep our planet something for the next generations and the generations afterward. And that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time on a Maya Science Kid video. Do 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 do